is like the go-to now. To, as All right, so here we go. Like, game three. Uh, you know, very well taking assessment of, of or taking stock of the of the situations, what's going on. I'm feeling much better about Weibo in these games. LNG has felt a little bit lost and certainly miscommunicating. Last game, they did not leverage their split push advantage, and we had engages from the support in a 1-3-1. When you play 1-3-1, you do not engage, not ever, because... You're playing into the numbers every single time, and the best case scenario is you get the 5v5 against the teamfight team that probably wants it. It's very, very rare that you're going to get anything out of it. So uh, I've seen some misfires from Hong. I've seen LNG not leveraging their lead, and now they're playing with Nocturne, so it could get tricky again. The only complaint we've had from Weibo is Light's teamfight positioning they, i don't mind their call to end in game two it wasn't quite there uh, they could have played a little bit further back the aurora ultimate didn't match up with where the uh, Jax was positioning and Jax itemization allowed him to soak up so much of the fight here we go a uh this looks like a pre-planned scripted oh lng separating zika separated from the rest of the fight now they're gonna get run down here this is a big deal this is a huge lead for weibo gaming and this is the brom diff guys you don't play for your level ones you throw them out the window when there's a brom on the enemy team you cannot continue that fight and then wrapping around and the extra ward here giving the vision Weibo are the ones with Braum. Like, Braum is so insane in level one fights. The passive, the Q, and Weibo here. The I love this from, from Crisp right now. Crisp, Crisp is one of the most, if not the most, aggressive junglers in the tournament. So he comes up here, helps to try to push out. Breathe. We have we have Pryo in mid. This is a 4v4, a 4v4, but they do have the lead in damage. So Crisp does get chunked out. They end up taking it. There's going to be a lot of fight back here. This is wild, guys. The amount of fighting right here. Three kills down by two minutes, 30 seconds. This is huge for LNG because level one was so bad for them. They end up deciding to make a 4v2 call, try to fight for the Raptors, and and basically re-raise Braum and say, Braum, you, you're trying to push us out? Well, all right, well, let's call. We're going to... We're Let's see what you've got in making the fight for it. Normally, you'd expect Weibo to win that because they had Pryo through mid, but because the wave was not all the way pushed in, they might have been afraid to leave, right? You see this position? Breathe is still level one. Scout is level two. So there's a little bit of reason to not like your position moving over to this fight. You're still a level one mini NAR, right? There's problems here. On the continued and extended level one, Scout comes through, he hits the charm. Now they end up going for the Braum here. Uh, you might say that Nars is the juicier target, but you're going for Braum because you remember and know he's got no flash. Uh, this is our target, no summoner spells. This is the person that we're going after. If you go for the Nar and you turn your attention, you might just get a flash. So they say, we want the kill, we don't want the flash. That's why we go on Braum here. Should be there. Should be a kill here. No. Okay. I thought he might step to the other side, cue him away, so that the Counter Strike would not land. Uh, but maybe they weren't track of all the weren't tracking all the cooldowns. You don't have all three cooldowns there as Jax, so there's certainly something to wonder there. The wave getting pushed in now, he can run straight back. All right, somehow Weibo has still managed to get the little right bit of the lead for themselves, here. that being the first blood difference, gets away from the despite giving up the two kills. But they were heavily, heavily assisted, right? So that money's pretty well spread out. Most of it's going to be on the champions with the kills, which is a big deal for Jax to try to outscale this this Nar to be able to get back onto him. They're going to try to punish Nar every time that he's in mini form. But Triforce Nar has has proven to be good enough, right? You can go, be good enough in these fights, deal tons of damage, partner up with Oriana. We have another one of these classic team fight comps into Nocturne. You can say, okay, Nocturne's great, but do you really want to press that R button into my Maokai Ash Oriana Brom? Like, I don't think so. I think they've successfully 
stoned the Nocturne by draft. The game is still in a relatively even state. Agreed. So that means LNG should have the side lane prio. You've got uh, everyone's going to be superior to Orianna. Ari can get away from the Nar, not really have to care about it. Unless you get into that Triforce Black Cleaver territory where you start getting a lot of those stacking at uh, movement speed effects. Will be really fun to keep track of this one as we're going to stick with our flip flopped Australian lane. They call them uh, thongs out there, don't they? Flip flops for the, in Australia. <laughs> uh, uh, LNG. We got to call up our Australia <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> We're spawn. Uh, flip flop lanes. Yeah, we should have got like spawn or Atlas on the desk instead. Uh, Weibo here. Okay, as you say, with these flip flop lanes. There is a slight lead for light, but it's, you know, 5 CS or so, nothing too monumental. Breeze getting that first Oh, nice little micro there from the Ash. You see that stepping and getting extra hit, stepping back. Dodge the majority of the Q damage. Kaisa's is trying to get that isolated damage on them. Now we've seen Kaisa. Be, I wouldn't mention this except for we saw Amumu in the last game, and Amumu is definitely part of the meta. What I'd love to see is an Amumu Kaisa pick, where you end up swapping the Amumu back into support. And this is sort of left over from uh, what was it two years ago, where Amumu was a rampaging support, basically blocked the entire meta game. Everyone was playing Amumu with misfortune. Kaisa was in that meta game. And they and yet they weren't playing it with the Amumu. Amumu can proc the plasma for you, set up the plasma. Plus has that amazing passive, and it feels like one of the best champions that you could ever partner with Kaisa. Just continued lockdown, big AOE damage. It helps to spread the damage. It makes it very easy for the static shift procs to go flying around the fight. Exactly because again, and uh, you know we don't see it this time. I can still hold out that we'll see it at some point. But the, the specific thing that you'd be trying to do is early pick a Mumu, try to get them to commit uh, jungle or whatnot, uh, and see if you can turn it into either a Mumu being stronger in the bot lane, uh, or you just run away because you know that you're going to be doing lane swapping anyways. You run away from the lanes and you get a counter pick in the jungle. Uh, and, you know, we haven't seen many of those come out. It hasn't been much about jungle carry. It's been much more about jungle set up for solo lane carry in the metagame with supportive AD carries. Uh, and for that reason, that's that's largely why we like Weibo here. Ultimately stronger team fight, solos, and Ash is going to be better on lower economy Kai'Sa. It's harder to get the resources on Kai'Sa. There's four champions on this LNG team that want gold and and so is kaisa going to be able to get to that triple evolve route are they going to have like the full static shiv if it's going to be rage blade uh zonias you know at what point do you pick up the zonias is it is it enough rom also just fantastic champion by the way into nocturne right naturally guardian's going to be good the fact that you're going to put up give the extra armor to your carry whoever gets jumped on by the nocturne right that's already huge but also that you put up the wall saying no more of this continuation and not only that but we have the follow-up right brahm ultimate oriana ash everyone's going to come together oh beautiful shockwave four men in uh this game, I mean, this game's over already. Crisp even dropping a control ward here to buy more time. I love this play right here. Right, as a support, you say, I'm tracking you. I'm going to continue marking where you are because it's totally worth my support or jungler time in a situation where you can't kill us, but we can harass you. And if we harass you, we can send you back away. Usually it means some amount of overextending to do it. So one of the best responses is to not recall. And so I love what Gala's doing here. Say, okay, you probably made a call that someone should come here and harass me while other people go do other things. So I'm gonna say, all right, I'll come back. You know, now that I know that it's just you, I don't feel as harassed. I know that other people are off to other things. They didn't come to harass me. So I'll just chill for a bit and then I'll come right back out on the map. Place a flash early. And then watch this commitment here from Chris. Flashes in, connects the slow. Nocturne comes in. And then Xiaohu Yoink. finds them all with a phenomenal shockwave. Oh, Boom. Juicy. And then Brahm's shield comes up in the middle of that, too, to be like, nope, you know, Kaisa, you're not going to get anything. Give the kill to the Orianna. They want her to be the biggest in the game. Love it. And guys, 
like I said before, if this is good, then FlyQuest has a big chance against Gen G because Quad loves playing Orianna. They love siphoning the gold into them. They've said that Quad's the strongest player on the team. And Inspired, happy to play a supportive style. Masu, happy to play a supportive style. And by getting the bot lane, the youngest players on the team, to play less pressure picks, right, where they're not expected to carry, but they can just be the ones that help facilitate the rest of the team. Great. That's what we want. That's what we want. So I'm, I'm, guys, I'm pumped for that series on Sunday. Most signature in the Kaisa, and he's going to have to do a lot of work this game. What a shockwave it was from Xiaohu. The sixth highest kills. Well, no, he's the player with the sixth highest kills of anyone at Worlds. Just passing past Showmaker has been here so many times. Last year, the first time, obviously. Yahoo yeah, has a lot of storylines available. RNG, kills and assists. One, one of the most prolific players has been here on multiple different rosters. Has been, you know, stage, so al almost goaded in, in China. They've had so many good, great mid laners. To to at least the semifinals. And uh, LNG currently backs against the ropes, at least in this game. And they would be in the series as well. They would fall down to two and one. It's popular to give junglers the credit. And we do it too, for especially in solo queue. Things are more disorganized. Jungler can be the glue that puts everything together. The best player on your team is your mid laner. That is still the case. Because that player gets resources, they can affect the entire map. They're going to be in a position to carry. They're the ones that can control everything around them. And there's a reason why you see the same mid laners year after year after year, and not all the rest of the supporting cast. Right? Like, when's the last time you've seen a Worlds that didn't have Trovi, Faker, and Showmaker from Korea, or Scout, Yahoo, Knight from, from China, right? Like, you have, you, and you have Yagao, who's been to plenty, and you have BDD, who's been to plenty, right? So even, even the next most, and the guys who don't, who aren't here now, are still those guys that you that have tons of experience it's these mid laners that put it all together it's the classic uh setup for their team and also in this lane swap meta it becomes especially important to be a cool calm composed and versatile player that can move around the map and make a lot of these adjustments so uh it's fascinating to see it scout we generally hold to a higher estimation than than jiaohu but but these compositions make it much easier for jiaohu to play a lot of pressure to for Ari to make something work. All right, here we go. We dive in. Love to see a proactive Nocturne play. You want to get that first one in. Are they going to get anything back? They're trying to punch Zika. Zax, Zax, Jax is trying to take everything. Jahu masterfully getting in those auto attacks. He sat in between and like throwing the autos so at the counter strike would end as the autos coming in is such a huge thing. Oh, spell block. He was not thinking about that, but he missed the blast cone. And now Ash gets to chase down, and now Weibo cleans up everything. Now the flash is down for no reason. Uh, this game's going to be very tough. 2,000 gold leads. Weibo's got all the champions on the map, which means that they're going to press forward, and they should be able to turn this into extra plates. Nara's going to have first access to top. Orianna's going to easily clear bottom and go pick up. You see again that she went straight into Seraph's Embrace. I'm telling you guys, this is what you want to do on this champion. Scale up with Lucid Boots. Get the tier stacked. And you can go for, for Leandri, Zonias, and then Rabidons. All right, good setup. A little bit. This is something that you don't want to do. Normally, as, as a blue player, you want to track this wall for two reasons. You don't want to be seen by wards. Some wards that are in here, you can get to the wall and not be seen until much later, if at all. And that you have more room if there is someone hiding in the bush. So Nar kind of making that possible. But you might say Weibo could have been baiting it, right? And if that's the case, then I would say next level... Next level brilliance to say, hey, I'm going to do the thing that kind of just looks like a loose play. It doesn't really look like much of a bait, but it absolutely is. I'm going to give them credit. I'm going to assume that those guys have that plan. It's like, hey, look, I can bait by just walking near this bush. They're going to spend a lot on me. We should be able to close out this fight. Uh, it's a little bit of a risky way to, to play, but hey, if you know you're that you're the stronger team fighting team, go for it. Strong mid, AD carry in a good spot as well. Gold leads in mid and in that bot lane role.
Alongside Chris, who, you know, I'm always happy to see All right, Nocturne could still be a threat. This is always how it plays out in the Nocturne versus Maokai matchup. Maokai's happy to just pick up the pieces, guard for the lanes. You, you know that you're going to outscale. You know that you're going to win these fights later. So no reason to take anything, any amount of threat versus Nocturne. Then maybe they can make a pick, uh, you know, with Nocturne. So Nocturne Jacks being the two places where they have any amount of gold leads, can they leverage it? A lot of the plays that, that uh, LNG have tried to set up, Weibo has countered them. And then Weibo did we just uh, see a Herald just snuck in? Down. Yeah, they just took a fast Herald uncontested because of the death timers there. So Weibo's going to be able to take this. Most likely, again, you like to see it mid and bot. Double mid is, is probably the best, but it just never, it doesn't get allowed. And especially since Nocturne's on the enemy team, you might give a little bit too much of a of a free engage window if you try to ride it in, or if you try to go any deeper than you than you deserve to. And crucially, crisp flash backup. Every time we've seen him with it available, he has used it to set up a play for his team in this game. Often, you can criticize Chris for his aggression. Sometimes he overstays, he gets caught, but this game, it is working to Weibo's benefit. Eight to four is the kill lead that they have. The dragon spawning in about a minute's time. LNG with a similar situation to game one where they're getting that deep push on the bot side. Chris needs to be careful here, a little isolated, but he has enough vision to walk his way to safety. And safety, I'll... also known as the bush by the enemy rep. Yes, that too. Yep. He's a man that likes to play on the edge. Look at this ward line that uh, Braum was able to sneak in. in this situation. Right, like through this, through playing through mid, you see that the, the wards that they fought for, one in mid wave, as close as you can to the turret or like slightly out of range. You get that vision, you use something, some amount of pushing pre pressure to move into this area, get a little bit deeper wards. And you use that to prepare yourself to control this area, which means that I expect them to go after this turret. Now, will they start swinging it side to side? One thing that we want to applaud FlyQuest for. They've done what I'll call pendulum macro, where they alternate what is their strong and weak side based on where the jungle camps are. And they basically send four people to the jungler's side of the map and then vice versa. Hold on, let's see the rest of this fight. Tarzan chasing leaves a potential window right here. Now that map, that ultimate was fantastic to force them out, uh, the Alistar to peel back. Gets full value on the uh, zoning to get the most out of it. But yeah, this pendulum macro, right? The idea that wherever side we want to push out, that's the side I want to have my jungler on. My jungler wants to be on the side that has camps. So that means that I want to have two here, one here, and one here for as long as I can to push this out. After I push this out and I rebound it into the enemy turret, it's going to take 90 seconds before I care about it to do this. So that's my chance to recall come back this way two push here one push one push and this is what they do they basically constantly swap weak sides of the map on like a 90 second interval it allows them to clear both sides of the jungle and keep their gold up through the course of the game so we'll, we'll keep an eye out on that see if they're looking for this all right nara pushing back into the wall Jax looks like he's about to get punched uh this rift is going to punch which is also going to be a big deal lng fighting for the dragon which is completely wrong uh maybe they say that all we can get is one dragon so Let's bleed one and try to get a dragon and hope it's enough for anything. But really, it puts it puts your team in a position now where you're in full retreat mode. Oh, it's light with the snipe to find the extra. You're down by so much. This gold lead does not tell tell the whole story. A kaiju fight of Rift Herald versus Dragon in the pit. As they drive it into the pit, it starts aggroing the Dragon. And then Weibo say, all right, we're going to go for the pit. That's funny. I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen that. Rift Herald taking a swing at the Dragon. All right, so they say, Jax, you zone. Alistar's just going to zone. All right, I like this. This play right here is good. If you're going to call, like, all right, let's just get Dragon and stone the rest of the play. It's just that here, once... You blow your Nocturne spell shield, it opens up for light, and he hits those. Nice combination there from Braum Ash. Such a good combination. Also, worth noting, Braum, one of those answers to that Renata combination. So if we're going to look at Renata Callista, might be, might be willing to see a Braum 
played into it and see what it come, comes from. It's very seemingly boring champion to play, but it, there's so much playmaking available with it. I love it. Plus, the best emote in the game. One. Oh, it's fine. Hey, ult for ult. Alt, Shahu forcing. Scouts ulti. Weibo just using that pressure to develop control around the Baron right now, as you say. This is All right, Nars can slowly start ticking forward. Try force plated steel cap should be okay. We do have the early Seeker's arm guard for Jax. He actually went for it second rather than trying to get any kind of second item. So his combat stats are going to be fairly low. Um, but maybe he, his baiting stat is going to be higher. Uh, then he ends up buying the magic, the needlessly large rod, which gives him very little in the in the way of auto attack damage. Basically, every third attack is going to be a little bit better, and your spells are a little bit better. But it's uh, it's not as much effect as getting something like a sundered sky. All right, they say that this is our chance. They do dive forward. We see a teleport. We come out, they get a kill, so they get a little bit for themselves. They actually got one of the best situations possible. Late teleport from Nar is the worst case possible, and they just got two big kills. So LNG finds the window. Weibo is going to be kicking themselves for that. Uh, I didn't confirm Light's position, but it looked another time like Light trying to run away from his problems rather than trying to get to the Orianna. Now, another thing I'd like to see these teams, it's become... It's become main place, but it wasn't always. And Cloud9 may have been the team that spilled the beans, but maybe everyone figured it out on their own. But when Nocturne Alt goes off, you're going to see these guys peeking onto each other's screens because that's the best way to get some information. Find out who's next to you, what you can do with it. Ash Arrow tried to stall some amount of backs. Can they get mid lane turret off of this or top lane turret? of this series a team makes a play how do you respond and lng responded flawlessly um early use of the nocturne altar to bring the tp in force weibo to split apart and light was left isolated the dive comp came into fruition from lng and removing light meant a one team fight Zika, i want to see this uh this That's replay here all right, Oriana, we've got shields, re-engage, counter-engage. All right, let's look at the team fight positioning again. Oh, that's not a good Zonia's. You wanted that fight to continue, but they do get the one up front. They get two up front. They're going to be okay. Ari's picking this apart. All right, they're making it work. The dive comp is coming together, and that looks pretty far for scout i don't know about going that far now breathe is huge so he, he might say hey i can actually carry from this position Jax is chunked out and doesn't have access to his zonias and ari's dead so the main people who would be trying to kill me here i you know apart from kaisa i have some access to them all right lng gets what they want i i you know what Go back and see the play. Look at that jump over the wall to stay onto that onto that control ward. I love that spot for it. Right. Okay, so jump. All right, that's fine to make sure that you're not getting rooted. It's okay to get rooted too. You can still auto attack and see if they pull into you a little bit more. But Kaisa repositions onto the back of the fight. Reposition this way. Yeah, still the split. But then they want more. Vedius. They're looking at Shahu and they're looking at this big bounty on his head they want the oriana but they just can't get him breathe comes in pulls out some heroics helps out shahu who remains unkilled on the ori there remains a big hope there for weibo but neither of these teams can just have a clean game can they the other team always has to pull out all the stops i'm going to be looking at light's positioning for the rest of the game so exciting we already said it before he's actually every hiding behind the turret he's not even approaching this this wave out in front of the base at all back and forth and in the love the runons now he went for kraken slayer so he's gonna have much more carry potential perhaps realizing that like if it's if oriana misses any round of spells then they might be short for damage uh kraken slayer and runon's gonna make it such she's got good wave clear she can still poke she can still be that supportive but can still flap as well and then the last one, Breathe got locked out, and LNG were able to take advantage of that. This ring of wards, in. the ring of fire. What are they playing for? Two dragons apiece. Four minutes and three minutes. Baron's coming up first. Really do come down to these fractions of seconds. 
and uh, playing it nicely. I mean, they really do. Your tournament life is on the line. I mean, they have to be pretty happy well, that not no that they didn't lose more with Baron. For you to re uh, let's take a, uh, look at where like we that are. Like that, this ward's out of reach. He moves it right away. Recently, it's felt like LNG have the impetus. They have the ability to step forward, but sometimes that stepping can be a bit precarious. Trolling for space here. They get mid lane prio. They step back. Ash is petrified. You can tell by Ash's movements, right? She's constantly tucking herself in behind the turret. Means she is not... She's not confident at all. And you see this ward right here that sees all of these, inter the entire intersection. Uh, this ward, LNG is going to play with their prio and keep on stepping up. LNG are just looking to prey on him. A split push is going, Nocturne's going. So this this is what I was talking about. Right now, see how these two are trying to get into this quadrant, but Nocturne's farming on this side? That is desynchronized. That is not synergy. The ideal situation would be that Nocturne is off pushing the same side that your team wants to play strong side, and then you can have your Jax, your split pusher, playing on the opposite side. And basically in a 90 second interval, you rinse, repeat, you swap, you swap directions. Instead, it's feeling a little bit syncopated, now, this red buff, it looks like Nocturne's actually going to path forward first, fight for vision first, help the team for this. They might go for the next wave of prio, and then they'll go check the red. Right, so Nocturne, this timing on the red buff, they want to have it, potentially for the duration of both fights. It might be a little bit greedy to wait for both. I think Nocturne should pull the trigger and go get the red right now. You want to be picking up this red as your laners are basically making it to the halfway mark, is the ideal situation. Looks like Nocturne's still going up, moving up with Alistar, controlling for vision. And now he goes for the red. Is he going to get Raptors first? Nar shows up. Jax is about to show on the map. This is when you want the red buff, right? So now they're showing. You want them to get the red buff now. He's still not taking it. This, all right, this is starting to feel greedy right now because now you're getting in the point. 40 seconds left, there are plays where teams can push into this area and now you might be a little bit stuck. He's even going for a recall, saying this is my last chance. We'll see what he picks up. Double Longsword did not go for the red buff again. So the team said, hey, we're in a lull state. We're just going to protect this little area of vision. We're just going to control one little spot and hold it here with this little bit of a lead. But this is really far forward from Hong. This is really far forward. You cannot be this far out when you've got two people looking for recalls. All right, so he does come back. Caulfield Warhammer. He's picked up the two control wards. And now comes the red buff. So the maximum amount of time for the team to have it. What is Kaisa doing down here? What is Kaisa doing down here? This can't be right. Onto Weibo. You see, Gala there was actually hovering Zika for a while. Ooh. All right, Zika now they want to take it. Right, Jax just took the turret. Back. You got some amount of rotations. Now's your time to come over here. Uh, try to threaten, force them to come to you. Now, to make a credible threat, you need to make sure that you have mid prio and you have to make sure that you're not not failing to walk through any vision that would normally see you. See how this matchup is going to play out. Three items versus three items definitely starts favoring Jax. Even even with this one, the armor can, does help out enough. This is also a red buff diff, right? Like you can go up. Wow, big junk. Ash came over, so Ash showing on the map means that they may just go for this now. Jax is going to go for the teleport. All right, so looks look for the for the positioning right here. They should be able to get this. Al starts positioning himself in between the two areas of the fight. Now he's going to suicide himself. I don't think he needed to do this. This is a missed call. Sometimes you need to do this. Sometimes you need to give your life as a support so that your team can get the the Baron. That this was not one of those cases. The enemy team fumbled enough and light showed right down here, which should have given them enough of a window to just take the take the Baron and then move off to the side. They must be saying, hey, we really don't want to take any amount of team fight. But remember, this Sterix was gone. His R was gone. The you would have had to get a teleport from Nar. All right, that changes things. Double trailing play for LNG. It's Gala and Weiwei with the ulti. So immediately answer, what a bait. What a bait from LNG. Wow. Dodge from the Ash Arrow into a set of plays. Zika, we've already seen him take these towers before. He's going to take another. 
LNG very quickly. All right, Zika on the verge of his Sterix gauge. And it might just be, that might be curtains if, if he gets to that far, but uh, this is going to be a crazy team fight. The Barons are coming. They've got Scout in the top lane, Ari super mobile. Uh, Jax is starting to work on the bot side. They've got the cannon in mid. There are no tools. <laughs> Short of an Orianna ultimate to get that down. Um, you do have some amount of the penetration from Ash. Including Kraken Slayer to try to rip through it, and they have enough range to, to hit that down. But what else are they going to get? They really want to get one more structure down. It's nice to watch how they're planning this. This control ward, right? Really, I like to put it right next to this wall, but that's okay, right? In the distance here, it stops anything from happening. Hold on, they found Zika. He dodged. All right, what are they going to take? Nocturne's leaving? Nocturne's leaving, guys. Uh, guys, that Jax is insane. Why did, why did Nocturne leave? Nocturne's saying I can almost get 16. I guarantee you that he's thinking about himself. That is so unlucky for Zika because Zika is playing so well and his Jax is so huge. They do end up getting an inhibitor for themselves and they get multiple resources down. But Nocturne leaving saying I can get 16. Hold on. There is no activity that you can do that will outscale what your team can do as a, as a combination, right? This, always stronger. Doesn't matter which of these fingers you decide to do anything with, you are always strongest like this. I can't believe they got that window. And then Nocturne doesn't want to get his, doesn't want to cast it because he's afraid that they're walking into a four-man team fight. They don't want to give him, and he's not level 16. Now he hits it. It took him all four camps. And you can see like how long that takes. Even this stage in the game, it does still take you a minute to go get all of these resources. And it's not good enough, right? In a minute, the enemy team can completely clear out their base. Push, They can push every wave back onto your side of the map in one minute. So that's why it's not worth it. Because whatever point of strength you have, you end up necessarily giving it up to try to get back he does end up giving himself a big purchase he's got this black cleaver bruiser build is complete nocturne full items essentially but now what do they have all they have is a bleeding top lane this super that's pushing in top wave oriana does not care about supers she's got all aoe damage the super just dies while she's clearing the rest of the spells W through to the range, sorry, Q through to the range, QW onto the melees the whole time you're attacking the super and you're getting that air, area of effect damage passing through and you basically just rip apart the super while the spells are clearing out everything else. And she really just thanks you because now all of these waves are coming to her. She's getting the gold plus the extra gold from the super minion. So... That's 200 golden experience that are not going to you and 300 golden experience that are coming to the Oriana. So that's going to that's gonna start tipping these scales. Uh, and you see that Rabadon's is almost complete here. I wouldn't be surprised if after the next super that they go for it. Now you see she's hidden. She can't go out. She still can't win these fights in the 1v1. But because of how big she is, she can survive them. 45 seconds. He's pinging. All right, I've got this. I got to take this wave. I, we can give this up. This is just D3, guys. This is not soul. And even if it were soul, I wouldn't even care because you guys can have soul and I want the elder to spread because our team fight's going to be insane. I've got my Rabadons. I'm four items on Oriana and we've got four items on Ash. So we are ready to go. Uh, Kaisa, though, can't be no slouch here. This, uh, this is a pretty big champion. Static Shiv gets out scaled, but the rest of this build does do a magnificent amount of damage. Okay, Ash Arrow down. We got a Jax go for Counter Strike. This probably means that they call off any sort of fight here for this. They might decide that they want to take because of the double oceans that they already have. This is the most important control ward you'll ever place in a game ocean map you get control words into this and you can pull it over it looks like what wavo should thank you for just calling this off um 
you can't go in, especially on an ocean map with the extra the extra grass. There's just no way in, right? You have like one little avenue of maybe tucking some vision in there, but like they're gonna see that, and then the one bush that becomes almost impossible to pass through, especially if you're blue team. All right, mid prio. Although they just walked, all right, very importantly, their two people were seen by the minions here, so they know that the that the call is Baron Vision. You'll see it right now with the bloom popping. Nars trying to hold his own in the bot wave. They're not going to care about this area right here with all this vision. Nars just going to step back. Now, importantly, right, the fact that we just went mega, this is big. It means that we don't have access to mega for several, several waves now. Are they just going to stall? Can Ash stall long enough? This is the last super in the top wave. Oriana is about as big as you're going to get. You see control wards all over the inventories here. Can work his way up towards that mid lane instead of burning his teleport. He's gonna base, but that deception, that darkness that he sits in makes it so difficult. But when Jax has moved over <clears throat> into the position. You see that he goes there before he goes to the recall. Mm, interesting arrow. Not being on target with them, no bullseyes yet. It feels this game. Now he goes and picks up. What has he picked up? Just a BF sword. Picking up on his own resources. This is a grasp, Jax, not Conqueror. So, you know, you get all that extra health. You're going to be very tanky in these fights. Uh, but you don't have as much damage as Conqueror build. So Worth down. noting right here, this control ward. A few moments before the drop on a roller coaster, right? We all hold our breath and hope that we see one final. This is where Ash Hawkshot's gonna be start being one of the premium abilities. Three minutes on, on the Drake is really not a consideration here. Baron should end the game. Now LNG has made some mistakes while trying to leverage their split push advantage. Oh that's big. That that they know they can take the fight. Alright, reposition here to the top of the wall. We see everyone coming in, cutting back from Scout. But look at this position, they stayed together. And the Gnar, the big Gnar wall in. They still had it. They clean up the fight. That is so huge, guys. You see the difference in the positioning again on this map using this chicane to force enemy team into you. The Ash Arrow maybe was never supposed to hit anyone but the Jax. And because the Jax was late to the fight, they couldn't get enough of the fight uh, up front. So they walk into the AoE of Maokai and Brahm and Oriana and eventually Nar dunking them into the wall. This game. Game three, curse you say, Eddie. Apparently, Weibo just don't care. Weibo are one game away from semis. <laughs>